A very good day, everybody, if you're new around here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say, really, but welcome anyway. Um, so in the last video, we did um, a, a, a two verticals and we phased them, right? We put a phasing harness between the two. In the description, I will put in a link to what is a phasing harness. And I'll also put in a link to what is velocity factor, because that's important. It comes into this. So we started off, if you remember, with two verticals. Um, one is as a reflector, okay? And then we went, we fed them both what, with a phasing harness, all right? So we delayed the line to one of them. And in phase, we found that more energy went one way or the other. You can feed them both actually and get kind of an omnidirectional pattern. You get a little bit more gain perpendicular to the uh, the array and then I happen to say what happens if you did three verticals I've, I've got it on here now John Gendron has built me a three element phased array control box relays the whole nine yards okay which we'll put out in the field I promise you probably on 40 meters because I'm just after a little bit more gain on 40 meters to the, either the US or about 120 degrees from that, I've got uh, VK ZL. I'd like to pick up Roly on 40 meters if I could. This is MMANA. It doesn't look very much at the moment, but we can reopen our 40 meter triangle. And uh, this is a free piece of software. I've done videos on this. Just search YouTube for DX Commander and MMANA. And you'll soon find some tutorials, you know, making your first model. But this is three verticals. And I've done the 40 meter band. It doesn't matter what band it is. Fundamentally, it's all the same. You can see there's three dots at the bottom of each of the, the telescopic poles or bits of aluminium, whatever you've built, okay? And they're roughly a quarter of a wavelength spacing as well. Now, John Gendron, when he made me my triangular box also made a great descriptive video. Well. I will find that video and put a link okay, so in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, just cruise along for a bit and let's see how we get on. So I've got these three verticals. You don't need to know the numbers. So on the, on the geometry, here's our three verticals. They're all about 10 meters high and scattered on the ground, roughly a quarter of a way from the part. And at the bottom here, we've got wire one, wire two, and wire three. They've all got a coax connection other than wire two. We just look at two. Which one is two? Just randomly select one. Wire two, there it is, two. Number two here has got, in fact, we'll change it over. I think we'll have it as wire three to start with. Zero, we've got the phasing harness now. You can do 45 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 75 degrees. John and I have talked about this. 60 on the math seems about right. But again, you'd need to look at those two videos to understand that phasing line if you wanted to do this yourself. Because fundamentally, all we've got here is three, I'll go here, is three verticals, one, two, and three. We've come up on our coax here. We've split the feed and we've put one coax there one coax to there and one coax to this one here. And all we're doing is we're switching in an extra, let's say we're coming down here, we're gonna switch in a bit of an extra coax on a relay and it's 60 degrees worth, okay? Whatever, right. So let's just see what that does. Calculate, start, hopefully I've got this right. And here we are. Now in the last model we were shooting left, this one's shooting right, it doesn't matter. I can force this down to a five degree elevation. If you remember, I like five degrees as a baseline to understand how an antenna is working at very low angles, because it's easy to convince ourselves that at 20%, uh, it's easy to convince ourselves that 20 degrees, for instance, off the horizon, it's working great. But yeah, how good is it working really low down? So I'm just using five degrees as a baseline here. So I forced this pattern here, looking down on the antenna, if we could, at five degrees slice, it's giving us zero 
minus 0 0.3, almost 0 dB. Doesn't matter, it says minus, it's irrelevant. Because when we very started, when we very first started this project, we found that a single vertical will give us about minus five. We got a parasitic verticals was giving it as I think about, in fact, I've got it here, minus 1.5. When we phase a pair, all right, using this loop here, we were getting slightly better. I think it was 0 0.8. This one's giving us 0 0.3. So there's not much difference between a phased pair and a triangular array. The only real difference is that it's now steerable with a relay box kind of 120 degrees. So you could have it over here or we could change this. By putting the phase line somewhere else, we were just pointing over to the right. Now we're putting south, pointing southwest, and uh, I, I could, sh I could show you the minus the the three dB beam width, but basically you've got all points of the compass on three. You know, obviously the most gain is is around here somewhere, but minus three. So that's telling us. What does minus three mean? So minus three, our best gain here is 120 degrees. It's about zero dB. So if we come around to minus three, minus three, say there, we've just got one, two, three, four, five, six. So about so we're about 120 degrees on minus on on a three dB bat beam width. So in other words, if we switched back to where it was just a minute ago zero there 60 there we'll calculate that again we'll see that our 3 db beam width now is saying five degrees off the horizon at zero one two three four five six degrees six minus four five yeah almost there'll be a crossover where mm, you know would it have been better with, with a different technology but we're still better by a couple of db on the edges okay so if you're in the us you would probably point this towards europe all right now for me it's quite handy because oh, if you look at the great circle map for where i am the great circle map and i'll show you that in a minute you know, north america is here and roughly 120 degrees over here we've got it's quite big actually we've got australia and new zealand stuff so that would be fine i could have one bubble going that way and another bubble going that way and then i'd be pointing down to sort of falkland islands and that way how do you get a great circle map i will actually quickly show you there's a really good oh here we are locator io this is mine 92 io 92 echo india i think i am uh great map doesn't take very long so there's the great circle map for Callum and you can see that uh, about 290 I get most of the US there so my my best lobe if you like if we can still find it here I would have over this direction and then about 120 degrees I've got uh, Australia and I think that is New Zealand which is it's quite small, but by the time you go, which way do you want to go? But anyway, I would, uh, I would just about get um, Rowley and the North Island on, on part of it. And then the other one would be beaming. Let me think about it. Oh, South, actually. I would probably just about to get the Falkland Islands, that sort of thing. That link there, I'll put that in the description for you as well. So the benefit over a three element or two element is really is flexibility not so much the gain because if you think about it all that is happening got these three antennas one two three all that's happening is we've put a delay line into one so say this one here there's the delay line this one is that we're just using the other two effectively as kind of reflectors but they're in phase or out of phase whatever out of phase going backwards in phase going forwards and there we are instead of just having one Okay, so what about four or six or eight or 10? 
I've got some plans for that. So if you stick around, we'll do the flamethrower next, which is for the pair of phased arrays, phased, about that. Um, and then we can build that up to eight. And uh, John Gendron has actually just sent me a broadside 10 meter, I think it's a 10 element vertical beam. <laughs> I've never heard it before. But we'll see if we can model that and see if we can get some understanding as well. So we'll be building this triangle in the field, see how it goes. So stay subscribed, bookmark the channel, whatever you need to do to, you know, to hang on to that one and uh, and see how I get on because we remote control from here quite often, don't we? If you've um, been part of the channel before, you, know, you operate my ham radio station, which is about five miles away. We'll do that from here. All right, so next one we'll do uh, the flamethrower, the four. All right, I think you'll you'll like that. We can build it into a six as well, actually, if you like. Okay, next video is here. Got a playlist down there. Next video is here. Got a playlist down there. Have a lovely day. Okay, so uh, video here. Right then, we have got another video here. You can see what's up. Come on, that's all the blood. What is that? Need to know about blood or he? I got a playlist here, and I've got no, I haven't. <laughs> oh, whatever. You got the idea.